Welcome back to the lab, folks. So today we're going to begin a short series on basic oscilloscope function and use. In this first part here, we're going to look at what an oscilloscope is and demonstrate its main functions using a simple analog scope. And the reason I'm going to use a simple analog scope is while the main functions of a scope are universal, uh, with some modern digital scopes, they're not necessarily accessed in a consistent manner. So it would be difficult for me to demonstrate something to you uh, that wouldn't make sense on your scope, but it does on mine. Anyway, once the main functions are learned, they can be more easily transferred to whatever user interface idiosyncrasies your particular modern scope has. So we'll start off with the basic analog scope. Now we'll do this by looking at a signal and doing some basic measurements. And uh, in the second part, we'll look at some of the more modern scopes and we'll do the same measurements as well as look at some of the benefits afforded by modern technology. But I'll be doing that on one of my scopes. Unfortunately, that's all I have. <laughs> um, and hopefully you could transfer that to whatever scope that you're working with. And in part three, we'll look at some basic probing techniques and what situations to avoid to get good, reliable signal display and measurement. And we may do uh, one or more other parts as well. I don't know at this point, but they're the basic three parts that we will do. So let's begin here. The function of an oscilloscope is to draw a representation of an electrical signal as it varies over time to allow us to visualize that signal. And uh, generally, uh, time is displayed in the x-axis and voltage in the y-axis. In this uh, diagram here, we see the scope in its simplest form. All scopes share these same basic functions. Just these four of them, vertical control, trigger control, horizontal control, and display. And some more modern scopes have far more functions, but uh, we're not going to get into that. Uh, we're just going to be, this is a basic course here. So the vertical control allows us to adjust for the amplitude of the signal for proper display and measurement. And some of the, the common sub-functions for that are the attenuator, which is actually the control of the amplitude. And we can also control the position on the scope screen, up or down, and what kind of coupling that we have. Uh, coupling choices are usually DC or direct and AC, which uh, removes a DC component, uh, usually by passing the signal through a capacitor, and then ground. The ground position disconnects the signal and shorts the internal amplifier input to ground. This will allow you to set the vertical position appropriately where you want to see it on the screen. And the trigger function allows us to synchronize the horizontal sweep with the signal under test. And it allows you to select what level of the signal you wish to sweep on, what's the source of your trigger is going to be. It could be, uh, you know, the internal amplifier could be an external source, or it could be even the mains frequency, or it could be one of multiple channels. And again, the coupling. So you, you may want to change the coupling from AC to DC, or you want to, might want to pass it through a filter. It depends on what uh, particular facilities your scope has. But uh, in some cases, if you've got a lot of uh, you know, DC component to it, and the, then you won't be able to adjust the trigger properly. So you couple it in AC format so that you can then adjust the trigger so that it works properly. And of course, we can, uh, we can decide whether we want to trigger on a, a rising edge or a falling edge. And uh, we can also choose the mode. So the modes is usually two modes minimum. Um, there could be quite a few more, but a, a minimum you'll have automatic. And what automatic will do is it'll force a, a sweep uh, regardless of whether there's a trigger condition or not. But if there is a trigger condition, it will synchronize to that trigger condition. But at least you'll have a display of the trace all the time. And that's usually handy for initially adjusting the trigger to get it right. And then there's the normal mode, they call the normal mode. That'll only trigger a sweep if the trigger condition is met. And then we have the time base and sweep generator here. And that, uh, that basically just controls the sweep rate. That's how fast the, the trace goes across the screen. 
and it controls the position. That will allow us to adjust the display for different frequencies of signals and how much of them we want to see on the screen. And of course there's the display over here which will take the conditioned uh, vertical and horizontal signals and use them to properly display waveform as a trace running across the screen. And we'll see that down in the lab. So let's go down and have a look. All right, this is the oscilloscope that we're going to use right here. It's uh, an old Heathkit oscilloscope. It's a model 10-4205. It's very, very basic oscilloscope. It's a dual trace oscilloscope. We'll only be looking at one today. And let's go through the basic functions that we, we discussed up in, in the office there. So over here, we have our vertical control. We can see here, this is the attenuator. So we can choose whatever amplitude that we want. And this is a usually graduated in volts per division. In this case, volts per centimeter. Divisions are one centimeter here. So generally speaking, if you're going to set up a look at a signal that you're not sure of exactly what it's going to be, and put these uh, dials in their middle positions and go from there. Here you have the position control here, and here you have your coupling control. So we'll start off here in AC. And the reason I do that is because if there is some DC component that has the signal way off the screen somewhere, it'll not allow me to see it, and I'll have problems trying to find the, the, the signal. So I always start off in AC, put this in the middle, put your position control in the middle, and we'll ignore this channel here. This is just a different channel here. So we're just gonna work on channel one here. And uh, don't worry about the intensity and focus. Uh, they're already been set up from the last time I used the scope. We'll put, here's the time base over here. This controls your sweep rate. Again, this is in microseconds per centimeter or time per centimeter. Uh, so it could be in microseconds, milliseconds, and so forth. So we'll set it up at 20 microseconds just to begin with. And uh, you have your horizontal position here, horizontal position control. So we'll, we'll put that in the middle too. Again, uh, if there's a large DC component, uh, we're going to have trouble triggering on it unless we can find the level. So we'll put the trigger control here on AC. We're going to use the source here. We're going to put it onto channel one, Y1 here. And you can see the uh, external, that's a connector at the back. You could have another signal coming in or you could uh, trigger it off a line frequency here. And uh, we'll, we'll start off by looking at a positive going pulse and put it in auto. Okay, that way you'll get the, the display of displaying something even if there's nothing coming in. So you'll, you'll get a line there. And now we can adjust our horizontal position. And what we want to do is adjust that so that we can see the beginning of the sweep right there. And we'll adjust the Y position so that we can get it up in the middle. And now we're all set to apply our signal. So let's, uh, let's turn on. I've got a signal generator here. We'll turn on the signal generator. And now we can see we've got some sort of deflection here. But we have to adjust our time base appropriately. Okay. So there we go. We're at uh, 2,000 microseconds per centimeter. And we've got our trigger level here. We can change our trigger level up and down. So this is our trigger level here. is on the very, very far left of the screen. That's our, the level that we're going. If we go down below the bottom of the sine wave here, it stops triggering. If we go above the top of the sine wave, it stops triggering. Okay, so where you want, you want it somewhere in there. And generally speaking, you adjust it so that you can make some decent measurements. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But that's basically how we set up the scope to see uh, an unknown signal. And you follow that procedure, you should be able to get any signal coming in and be able to trigger on it. If it's a triggerable signal, uh, something like random noise and stuff like that, you're not going to be able to trigger very well on it, regardless of what you do. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's do some basic measurements here. So I've got this uh, signal coming in. It's a one kilohertz signal and it's at two volts peak to peak. Can we see that on the scope? Well, let's have a look. So we have our vertical amplifier set up here for 0.5 volts per centimeter. And if we look here from the bottom of the signal to the top of the signal, we got one, two, three, four. So we've got four times 0.5 is two volts peak to peak. 
as to how you measure amplitude with the oscilloscope. And how about the time base here? So, like I said, it's one kilohertz. We have it uh, coming through here. We, we're sweeping at 200 microseconds per division. And so let's now, we'll change our horizontal position or our trigger level to get it starting on a nice convenient spot so that we can start counting over from there. Okay, so now we're crossing over right here. And we go one, two, three, four, five. So we've got five divisions at 200 microseconds per division. This would be one millisecond. And that would give us our frequency of one kilohertz. Now what happens if I change this here? You can see now, instead of triggering on the up, we're triggering on the down. And we set our horizontal position here so we can see precisely that point. See, the point doesn't change, so the trigger level doesn't change, but the slope changes. And here are the, the different couplings here. In this case, we have AC, which goes, like I say, through a capacitor, take out any DC component. We have DC. In this case, we don't have any DC components, so it's not going to make a lot of difference. And then TV. Uh, TV is a, is a low pass filter, but basically that's for working on TV sets so you can, you can trigger, instead of on arbitrary noise and other things like that, you can trigger on the vertical uh, sync rate of the television set. Okay, let's put it back here to DC. And now auto and normal. So in auto mode, as you can see, if, if our trigger condition is not met, we still get a trace. And in normal mode, we won't. So the trigger level would have to be set. So we can put it back in auto, go over here, set a trigger condition, and then it should trigger in normal. And that's what that function is for. So that's it. That's, that's basically an oscilloscope. These are the, the, the basic functions of an oscilloscope. This is what it does for you. So you, know, you could have any other kind of waveform coming into it and the same things apply. So let's have a look at a couple other waveforms here. Let's look at a square wave. So it's the same basic thing. Now that it, with a square wave, the triggering is a little bit different. Now it, it is going to trigger at the same point, but you're not going to be able to see that. And the trigger generally gets a little bit sensitive for a square wave, especially one that has a very, very, very fast rise and fall time. Now let's look at a, a triangle here. One volt peak to peak. And we can see our amplitude's gone down. If we want to see it a little bit taller, we can change the vertical amplitude here with the attenuator. And of course, if you wanted to see more waveforms on the screen than just the, the one, you can change the sweep rate here. Or if you just want to look at one particular part of the waveform in more detail, then uh, you can do so like that by increasing the speed of the trace, the sweep rate. So that's it. There's uh, part one of our look at oscilloscopes. Uh, in the next part, we'll, we'll put up a, a more modern digital oscilloscope and we'll look at some of the fancier features that you get. But this is it. This is basically how you use an oscilloscope. And this, what I showed you here today, can work on any oscilloscope, all the way from the cheapest little Chinese DSO through various analog oscilloscopes all the way up to the fanciest. Thanks for coming out today guys. I, I hope some of you got something out of this and I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you can or subscribe to the channel if you want to see the next episode. We'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, have some fun with electronics. Bye-bye.